Welcome to the Ladder Safety Training Module. This module will cover the following topics. The general construction of ladders. Types of ladders. Ladder selection. Ladder inspection. Ladder setup and use. And ladder storage and maintenance. Ladders are tools commonly used to gain access to higher levels that are otherwise unreachable. When maintained properly and used according to safety guidelines, they are a simple and effective tool. However, each year thousands of workers are either injured or killed in ladder-related accidents. As a result, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, has established safety guidelines for working with ladders in an attempt to prevent ladder-related accidents. Ladders come in a wide variety of types designed for various jobs. Generally, most ladders fit into one of four categories. Step ladders, straight ladders, extension ladders, and fixed ladders. Step ladders are self-supporting portable ladders that are not adjustable in length. They are commonly used in areas where items need to be reached, but there is no structure available to supply support. Straight ladders are portable ladders that are not self-supporting and are made of a single section that is not adjustable in length. They are used to reach items on a structure that is supplying the support for the ladder. Extension ladders are not self-supporting ladders that consist of two or more sections traveling in guides to allow height adjustment. Extension ladders are used like straight ladders but allow for greater heights to be reached. Fixed ladders are ladders that are permanently fixed to a building structure or piece of equipment. These ladders may have additional structures attached, such as rest platforms, cages, or wells. Ladders can be constructed from a variety of materials including woods, metals, and reinforced plastics. They usually consist of two side rails and are joined at regular intervals by cross pieces called steps or rungs. In general, ladders have very few working parts. However, extension ladders usually have pulleys, ropes, and ladder locks. In some cases, ladders may be equipped with roof hooks or adjustable feet to provide added stabilization. Selecting the appropriate ladder for the job can greatly reduce your chances of being involved in a ladder-related accident. Some major considerations when selecting the ladder can include height requirements, weight capacity, surface conditions, and hazardous obstructions. The following sections will provide ladder-related safety information to help you make the right decision when selecting a ladder. Selecting a ladder of adequate length is one of the key factors in working safely on ladders. When sizing the job, it is important to remember the following rules. Follow the one-quarter rule. This rule states that the base of the ladder is one foot away from the structure for every four feet of height to where the ladder rests against the structure. The length of the ladder should be calculated using the formula a squared plus b squared equals c squared. This states that the horizontal distance squared plus the vertical distance squared will give you the length of the ladder squared. Straight or extension ladders should be used at an angle and extend three feet above the upper support. Sections of extension ladders must overlap according to the following table. If the length of the ladder is under 36 feet, then the overlap should be three feet. If the length of the ladder is over 36 feet and under 48 feet, then the overlap should be 4 feet. If the length of the ladder is over 48 feet and under 60 feet, then the overlap should be 5 feet. The next section will describe an example of these rules. To illustrate how ladder height calculations work in the field, let's follow Jack as he selects a ladder to access the roof of a 12-foot building. In order to figure out the length of the ladder needed, Jack uses a simple mathematical process. First, he uses the one-quarter rule and finds that the base of the ladder should be about three feet from the building. Next, he multiplies the height of the building by itself and gets 144, and the horizontal distance times itself and gets 9. 
Jack adds the two numbers together and gets 153. Using his calculator, Jack finds that the square root of 153 is 12.37, which can be roughly rounded up to 12.5 feet. Knowing that he still needs to add 3 feet to the length of the ladder so that it will extend the proper distance above the point where the ladder contacts the roof, Jack adds 3 to the 12.5 and discovers that he needs a ladder at least 15.5 feet long to safely access the roof of the building. A ladder's weight capacity is also a key element to consider when choosing a ladder. Ladders can suddenly give way and break under excessive weight stress. When evaluating the stress to be placed on a ladder, remember to factor in the weight of any additional equipment, including personal protective equipment, or PPE, or tool belts. If tools or equipment exceed weight capacity of the ladder, use an alternative means of transporting them, such as a rope or tow line. Portable ladders are constructed under general classes, often referred to as the duty rating. These classes are created for your safety and should help guide you in making your selection. The classes include Type 1A industrial ladders are rated as extra heavy duty with a load capacity of 300 pounds. Type 1 industrial ladders are rated as heavy duty with a load capacity of 250 pounds. Type 2 commercial ladders are rated as medium duty with a load capacity of 225 pounds. Type 3 household ladders are rated as light duty with a load capacity of 200 pounds. Each portable ladder must have a label posted clearly on the side rail signifying its duty rating. Before selecting your ladder, make sure it is properly rated for the weight capacity of the job. Careful observation of the condition of the surface where the ladder will be set up is another key component to selecting the proper ladder for the job. When a surface is uneven, use a ladder equipped with the proper attachments designed to level the feet of the ladder. If the surface is hard or smooth, choose a ladder with non-skid feet or spurs and take extra precautions to secure the base, such as having a coworker hold the ladder. When selecting a ladder, be sure to check for hazards such as exposed electrical equipment or power lines. If electrical hazards exist in the working area, choose a non-conductive ladder such as a wood or reinforced plastic ladder. Maintain at least 10 feet of clearance from the hazard at all times. If you suspect a structure may not be stable enough to support leaning a straight ladder against it, choose a self-supporting step ladder instead. Also, never use a stepladder as a straight ladder by leaning it against a supporting structure. Once you have selected the right ladder for the job, it is important to conduct a visual and operational inspection before working with it. Making sure that a ladder is fit for use before each job is your responsibility. Ask yourself the following questions when examining the ladder. Are the rungs or steps secured and free of oil, grease, and dirt? If ropes are attached, are they in good condition? Are there any signs of structural damage, such as cracked side rails or broken parts? Are the support braces intact? Is all the hardware secured and properly functioning? If for any reason the ladder does not pass your inspection, remove the ladder from service and tag it for maintenance to avoid the possibility of accidental use by coworkers. If a ladder is damaged beyond repair, be sure to properly dispose of it. Properly setting up your ladder significantly reduces your chances of having an accident. When transporting your ladder to the job site, carry the ladder parallel to the ground and balance the weight by holding the side rail with your palm facing in toward the middle of the ladder. For ladders with lengths exceeding 20 feet, always use two people to transport the ladder. If a ladder is transported on a vehicle, make sure it is properly secured at both ends. When using a straight or extension ladder, be sure to remember the one-quarter rule and position the base of the ladder one foot away for every four feet of height to the top support. Following the one-quarter rule should create a safe climbing pitch of 75.5 degrees. Make sure the feet of the ladder are securely positioned on a level, 
clean, and slip-free surface, and tie off the top of the ladder whenever practical. Never use unstable materials such as wood planks, boxes, or stones to level a ladder. When preparing to work with a ladder longer than 25 feet, secure the ladder by bracing all four points or tying off at the top and bottom. Always adjust the length of an extension ladder while standing at the base to observe that locking devices are engaged. Extend ladders three feet beyond the top of the supporting structure. If you are planning to use a ladder in a high traffic area, on blind corners, or in front of doorways, take proper precautions to seal off the area. Lock or brace the doors and post warning signs to prevent accidental collision with vehicles or pedestrians. Because falls from ladders are a significant source of fatalities and disabling injuries, it is very important to remember the following rules when using ladders. Always face the ladder when climbing up or down. Never attempt to climb the supportive cross bracing on the back side of a step ladder. Some step ladders are specifically designed for use on both sides and provide steps for climbing on the front and rear, while others only provide steps on the front. Never use the top two rungs on step ladders. Never use the top three rungs on straight or extension ladders. Using rungs higher than this leaves nothing to hold on to and can cause you to lose your balance. Never use a ladder for a purpose for which it was not designed, such as placing it in a horizontal position and using it as scaffolding. Never attempt to reposition a ladder while in use. Ladders should only be repositioned from the ground and not by walking or shifting while on the ladder. Do not reach beyond your arm's normal extension. Keep your belt buckle positioned between the side rails at all times to maintain your center of gravity. Never allow more than one person on a ladder at a time. Never attempt to strap or tie two ladders together. When climbing onto a structure, be sure to step sideways onto the structure and never step over the top of the ladder. Never attempt to hurry up a ladder and keep at least three points of contact at all times. Proper care and storage of ladders will reduce damage to the ladder and extend its life. Ladders should be stored in designated locations that are clean and non-corrosive. Use racks or brackets and provide ample support to prevent warping when hanging ladders on walls. If ladders are stored on end, secure the upright stability of the ladder with a rope, chain or other suitable restrictive device. Keep ladder steps clean and free of oil, dirt, grease, and other slipping hazards, and be sure to maintain a smooth ladder surface to prevent snagging of clothing and puncture injuries. The ladder's functional hardware should be cleaned and lubricated on a regular basis. Over time, wood ladders may need refinishing. Never paint a wood ladder as the paint could hide serious defects in the structure. Instead, use a non-conductive clear coating such as varnish to protect the ladder from aging too quickly. While ladders are a common and simple tool, they can present a dangerous and even deadly work hazard if safety rules and guidelines are not properly respected. Following the proper guidelines when working with and around ladders can help you avoid injury and create a safer working environment for you and your coworkers.